Okay, let's do a quick experiment. Here I am wearing a wonderful hat, and I'm sure because it is such a great hat, within the last three seconds you've gone, wow, I would love a hat like that, or you know what, I would just like to be friends with the hat, look at the hat. But now it's gone again. So you are going to yourself, oh my gosh, I missed the hat. Wouldn't it be great? if it came back. That's right, that's how I've done the intro to today's video because there are a bunch of wrestlers who are probably planning their returns right now and I think when it does happen, they are going to be truly epic. Why? Here's why. And Hit Row. Now you are saying, wait a minute, Simon, Hit Row have already come back to WWE. I saw it on SmackDown recently, but this is the whole point. I'm using this as evidence because I wrote this damn video last week before SmackDown had aired and then it happened. So I was going to change it, but I was like, no, 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 no. This goes to show we are in a crazy era of sports entertainment and you don't know what's going to happen. Who misses that? I do think this is a really smart move though, because even though the group is weaker without Swerve Strickland, who is signed to AEW, they are super duper cool. They've just got something about them and you can never have enough factions in wrestling. I don't care who you are, it just ties into real life. Remember when you used to go to school, what's the first thing you tried to do? Get some buddies, get some pals, get some friends, so it made your life easier. Same here. And moving on to number nine, which may usurp me too, depending on when this video goes live, Bray Wyatt. Now, if you just go on your Google machine right now and search for Mr. Wyatt, you will see a bunch of reporters going, oh my gosh, WWE want Bray Wyatt back. It sounds like Bray Wyatt wants to go back to WWE. And the reason he was let go to begin with is because he fell out with Vince McMahon. And given that Vince McMahon was the boss back then, Makes sense. I really don't know why you wouldn't do this because the Eater of Worlds gimmick was excellent. It just got ruined by bad booking and it was exactly the same as The Fiend. Now, The Fiend shouldn't have even existed to begin with because the only reason we had The Fiend is because we had destroyed original Bray in his rocking chair and he had to come up with something else. Which is probably why you could even take an amalgamation of these two gimmicks and create something that everybody would enjoy or just let the man come up with something new. Because if you're gonna walk into my house and tell me that Bray Wyatt ain't a creative so-and-so, are you crazy? Which brings us on to number eight, which again is a ticking time bomb in terms of relevancy. It's Mr. Kenny Omega. Now I am recording this over the weekend, meaning Dynamite is coming up in like three or four days. And it seems very likely on that show, the Young Bucks are gonna come out for their trios match and say, we need a third person. And because Hangman Page doesn't wanna do it, we're going to get Ken. Now, I think this is absolutely tremendous because not only did CM Punk come back recently, but if Kenny Omega also makes one hell of an epic return, then all of a sudden the star power in all elite wrestling just keeps going up and up and up. And if he does rejoin the Young Bucks who are trying to turn face, kind of, but kind of not, and then maybe when we're done with this tournament, they all reunite. So we've got Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, Kenny Omega, and Hangman and Page. And then you put them into a feud with some of the other factions that we already have on AEW. Well, I don't understand why we're not doing this right now. Why are we not making Back to the Future 4 and ensuring this is the plot? And in at number seven, it's kind of a different one, Chris Statlander. Now, very sadly, the former alien went on social media recently to tell us that she's going to need knee surgery. And this was doubly upsetting because it's not the knee that she had to get fixed before, it's the other one. That's just unfair. All it takes though is a quick search though, and aside from those crazy people who always say nuts things, there is such an outpouring of love for Chris, especially because it felt like she was gonna be the one to beat Jade Cargill for the TBS title. And while we never want anybody to get injured, because it's never good, when she does come back and she does her rehab, if you play it right, you could have a Triple H situation or you could have a Becky Lynch situation. You know what I'm talking about. People that have been dragged through the mud and when they finally get back on TV, your love and your care for them is twice as much as it was. So when they do win that big championship or when they do win that big match, it is the greatest thing ever. And admittedly, when it came to the game, that kind of got usurped at WrestleMania 18 by Hulk Hogan versus The Rock. But look, that was still the idea. And I think that's gonna happen with Chris Statlander. So while this one may take a while, I think it's gonna be brilliant. And of course, all the positive thoughts to her. And a bit of a different one in at number six, Braun Strowman. I, even I am doubting myself on this one now because there was a story going around the other day where Booker T on his podcast went, I'll tell you who I'm not missing, Braun Strowman. I'm like, 
What an unnecessarily mean thing to say. However, sometimes it does kind of feel like Booker is a conduit for how WWE feels about things. So maybe there were some rumours, and this is them shooting them down. Now, I don't think that Braun needs to go back to World Wrestling Entertainment, but when he did leave there, it kind of felt like he was finding his feet again, and then he was gone. I also think it would be another good surprise that probably would get a reaction, as long as you allowed him to find his place and push him in the way that a monster among men should be pushed, then that would be fine. Again, the problem with it before is that all those times he should have beaten Roman Reigns, he didn't beat Roman Reigns, and then he won the Universal title in a swamp match, <laughs> or whatever the hell that was. So once again, we had thrown him in the floor. Maybe it's time to prop him back up again. And talking to Braun Strowman, number five, Eric Rowan. This one actually ties into another video that may already be live on What Culture Wrestling or will be going live soon. I probably should have mentioned it in the Braun Strowman entry. But when Bray Wyatt does return to WWE, if you want to do the brand new Wyatt family, perfectly cool with it. It wasn't broken then, and it ain't going to be broken today. Now, I actually wouldn't put Strowman in that, but I would put Eric Rowan in it because I just think he fits so perfectly. My third guy would be Dominic Dijakovic. But why wouldn't you want Eric to come back if you've got Bray coming back too? Now, of course, it all depends on what Bray Wyatt wants to do. But as you may be realizing right now, I'm so mad that the original Wyatt family were not booked how they should have been booked. And in fact, what I would do is this. I would look over at AEW and go, hi, they've got trios titles. Maybe we should have trios titles too. The internet's going to make meltdown and go, copycat, copycat and then make the Wyatt family the trio champions and have them hold those baits for one year. Baits, belts, for one year. Quite tired. <laughs> you can probably tell. And it's so damn hot, I'm sweating. We are off the rails. Where's the hat? Which brings us on to number four, which actually ties in by accident, Bo Dallas. This one is just for me. A few months ago, Bo was doing an interview and he said he was ready to return to wrestling. Put him in NXT 2.0 for all I care. Just give me that Bo Leave gimmick once again, but this time do it how we were doing it on the original NXT. If you've never seen that, go and load up WWE Network or Peacock or whatever, and go and watch him as the NXT champion. He was so damn entertaining because he was an idiot. I'm not entirely sure how he'd work out on the main roster, because my word, did that guy have to do everything. Don't forget he was in the B team. But this is basically me just trying to put things out into the universe now. Sometimes when you do that, they come true. Which brings us to number three, which is far more obvious, MJF. Given that Punk is now back on television and probably about to be the real world champion once again, I think Maxwell will be sniffing around soon. And I tell you, given what he did when he left AEW, when he cut that crazy promo, when he does return, the damn roof is going to come off the place. And I do admit, too, that I think he's actually been gone a little bit too long, but it still makes me massively intrigued. And I'm still a super nerd here. Was it work? Was it real? Was it some kind of work shoot? Ultimately, it doesn't matter because it did create a lot of conversation. But again, the flip side to that, where the hell is he? He is a superstar, though. And if you want to come in here and make the argument the ratings have been down ever since Friedman wasn't on your television set, and some people just have to hold their hands up and go, that's a very fair point. I mean, there's also CM Punk and Brian Danielson and Adam Cole. It's a collective here. But when we are talking about kind of homegrown talent, MJF is right at the top of this list. <laughs> we should do it as a surprise too. He should just walk out and go, kapow, I'm back. It's gonna rock. And we go to number two. Becky Lynch. You can already figure this one out. I mean, there's not much to say about it. Of course, it sucked that she hurt her shoulder and I hope she is doing okay. But the last thing we saw her do before that happened was she went babyface again. I've said it once, I'll say it twice. I'll say it 99 times more. While I thought she was a very good heel, she is so much better as a good guy. I mean, just the emotion she's able to elicit. So that's it. I'm drawing a line under it. I just can't wait. Which is the same for number one. Certainly seems like it's going to happen, my friends. Sasha Banks and Naomi. And the only reason I put them together is because it does sound like they're returning as a tag team, which means the scenario is probably going to be this. I think Dakota Kai and Io Sky are going to win that women's championship tournament. They are going to become the new tag team champions when they're celebrating going, oh my gosh, can't believe I did it. Sasha Banks and Naomi's music is going to hit. They're going to come out once again. The reaction is going to be all time. And there's your feud. 
we all gonna be going, yes. I just don't see why you wouldn't do it. Clearly Naomi and Sasha's problems were with Vince McMahon, but Vince McMahon is gone now, and Triple H has always been such a supporter of the women's division, why wouldn't you want either of them back in your company? They're really, really good. And I'm so confident about this that I shall stand here now and tell you this. If this does not happen within the next, let's say, three months, I shall make a very special video where I grow my hair. Now you'll be like going, Simon, that sounds absolutely crap. You haven't seen my bald spot, man. It's embarrassing. Not many other amazing comebacks that we're about to see. Make sure you let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles. Make sure you come follow us on social media. We do have other videos. Watch one. My name is Simon Whatculture. My camera's about to die. I can see the battery. Goodbye.